Hey guys, welcome to DevCon 2021. Today we're going to be talking about UiPath Test Suite. My name is Vikram Parolkar. I'm a senior sales engineer based in the Americas, and I'm one of the SMEs when it comes to UiPath Test Suite for my region. Today we're going to be talking through a story of the day in the life of a digital tester. UiPath Test Suite was released back in our April release of last year, 20.4. And that's where we enhanced some of the products between our build, manage, and run component. Introducing and expanding our automation platform into the world of both application testing and RPA testing. In addition, we've enhanced areas such that development teams, IT teams, and RPA business teams can share, reuse automation, infrastructure, and skills to ultimately transform the test center from a cost center into a value center. Now, in typical testing approaches, when it comes to automation testing, you are application testing, you are going to see automation very prevalent in current uh, organizations. And the traditional test automation approach is typically a many manual tester or test executioner to the test engineer, a many to one relationship. And the reason for that is because multiple scripting tools have very awkward integrations. Automation is only done by a few skilled resources. Even if you do automate some scripts, it tends to be more about babysitting by these test executioners and these testers because the scripts tend to be very fragile. Uh, there's very high maintenance, and ultimately there's a steep learning curve. All of these challenges around traditional test automation today lead to a very low ceiling when it comes to automation coverage. And on average, we see that automation tends to level out at around 30 to 40%. And so with the UiPath test suite approach, we hope to transform all of the testers into digital testers and enable them with the conjunction of automation architects to really democratize the ability to automate tests. And by democratizing that automation, you're going to see a couple benefits. First, on average, we've seen three times faster, faster test case creation, a higher automation coverage and a higher automation rate and ultimately a 50% reduction in the amount of maintenance because we're bringing a production grade robustness of our automation into the testing world. And so as a review for those not familiar with UiPath Test Suite, uh, our, our test suite is composed of four individual products. First is Studio, your development environment. We introduced a new Studio profile called Studio Pro. This allows you to do everything you could do before with Studio in terms of creating functional workflows, but add testing functionality on top of them to create test workflows. Once you've created a test in a development environment, you're going to deploy it to Orchestrator. And once it's an Orchestrator, you're going to be able to take all the test cases you've defined in Studio and organize them into test sets. And these test sets are then going to be executed by a new type of robot called a test robot. Now that's the automation side of things. UiPath Test Suite wouldn't be complete without some sort of reporting tool. And that's where Test Manager comes into play. Test Manager allows you to do things like requirements management, basic analytics and reporting, exploratory testing, but we know you're not gonna be able to automate everything in the first week you have this tool. So, if you want, you also have the ability to do manual testing. And with manual testing, you are also able to document all of your test cases with an integration with our documentation tool, UiPath Task Capture. In addition, UiPath Test Suite has various integrations. On the front end, on the application lifecycle management tool, ALM tool, we understand that many organizations already have existing test management solutions. So while Test Manager can be a standalone tool, it's best used as a web service to integrate with those existing solutions. 
such that anything you're automating today, all of the logs, all of the results are also fed back to your test management solutions. On the opposite side, when it comes to CICD, we do have integrations with tools like Jenkins or Azure DevOps to really fully automate the deployment and testing process. Now, as I mentioned before, we're gonna walk through the journey of the digital tester. So enhancing those manual testers or very inexperienced testers and giving them the ability to use automation and build test cases themselves. And so we're going to see that story in a couple different ways. The first is how can a digital tester leverage attended automation and UiPath Assistant in order to just run basic automations? And so start my day, that's a very common automation. The testers are gonna be working with various tools, the ALM tool, UiPath Test Suite, or even the, uh, the robots themselves. And if they need to do any manual testing, they can use attended automation to get started. After they start their day, we're gonna see how they can launch test sets and that integration between UiPath Test Manager and any existing ALM tools, in this case, Jira. We're then gonna move on to synthetic test data generation. A big part of a tester's job is to ensure that a test env environment is ready. And so to ensure a test environment is ready, rather than doing this manually, we can automate it. And with our attended automation and test automation, we can synthetically generate large amounts of test data. And more importantly, update our orchestrator and our test data queues for our test robots, as well as our test environments using traditional RPA. After that, we're going to kind of dive into the life cycle of how do they document new test cases? What's this UiPath task capture integration and what's the value that that integration provides? And then as we transition into studio, what is a framework that a digital tester now has access to such that they can quickly build their own test cases and be enabled via democratization? And so with that, let's go ahead and transition to the video. So here we see a digital tester starting their day via UiPath Assistant. As soon as they click with the quick access panel, they're able to start an attended robot. And during this time, the robot's just gonna run on their screen, opening up all the necessary applications they need to work with their day. This means that the, the tester can go grab water for the day, grab and make a cup of coffee, catch up with their coworker while their computer is getting ready. Once everything's open, next we're gonna see how can they actually get started with an ALM tool. We have a sprint here in JIRA where we have two test cases, our two user stories around UI Bank uh, web application. And as I dive into one of those user stories or requirements, I'm gonna see that with JIRA and the X-Ray plugin, I can define different test cases. And so the two test cases, that I have here are around logging in. And so one, I have checking the ability to log in. If I enter an incorrect password, will I get the proper incorrect password notification? And the second one is that if I log in as an unverified user, uh, I've registered, but I've not verified my account, will I again get the proper incorrect information or not verified user information. Now, as I dive into that X-ray uh, test case, you'll see I'm able to define all the manual steps. I would be able to do any manual testing from JIRA itself and from X-ray. However, if I wanted to, because of our integration, I'm able to automate this. And the first step is to push all of this information, the requirements, the test cases, over to UiPath Test Manager so I can start automating the solution. And so this is done automatically, but you can also do it manually. Here, this is UiPath Test Manager. And so you can see from a UI, we're gonna have a very basic dashboard. I'm gonna have my results, any open defects, 
the total automation coverage and automation rate. Um, what percent am I doing manually or what requirements have I not tested? And then of course, I'm able to see the latest results. So let's navigate to a test set. Uh, pretend I've already automated one of these examples. Here, I've already defined a test set. And because Test Manager is linked with Orchestrator, I have the ability to just manually execute my automated test sets directly from UiPath Test Manager. We'll see an unattended robot. This would run on a back office server somewhere or on some other machine. But if you wanted to RDP into that machine, you would be able to see the robot running in action. For demo purposes, I've actually had this robot throw an error. Basically, the robot was trying to reach out to UiPath Orchestrator for test data, but there's no test data ready in my environment. This is a very common error that testers might get. And if needed, they will need to manually go in and update the test environment. But luckily with UiPath, we have automation, we have attended automation. And one of the automations I have available to me is the ability to generate that synthetic test data. Of course, that could be incorporated into the unattended robot process. However, again, for demo purposes, I wanted to show you what it would look like from an attended side. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the generation of test data. I'm gonna be prompted how many records do I want to generate? Let's go ahead and enter five. It really doesn't matter whether it's you know, a low number or large numbers. The ability to create large amounts of test data is gonna take a mere number of seconds. And just like that, I do have all of my test data records. So if I wanted to open the Excel, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I've exported the data into Excel. We can see it there. Once I have the test data, I can review it. And once it looks good, make any tweaks, I can choose to add it to my test data queue. By doing this, by adding it to Orchestrator, this information is now available for my robot to consume. Now, lastly, the robot can consume the data, but if these accounts aren't registered, then when I go ahead and try to run my unverified user, I'm going to get the incorrect message because I didn't do this prerequisite step of entering this test data into my test environment. And this is where the value of RPA, because we can do something in a production environment with production grade automation, the ability to, to update my test environment and automate that capability is really important. And so we'll see it go through the five records. And now my, my test case would be ready. If I wanted to re-execute it, it would run successfully. So let's talk about actually automating something. So I have this unverified user test case. I defined the manual steps. I'm today automate, uh, executing it manually. But what if I want to start automating the solution? What am I going to do? In order to communicate the results over to an automation developer, I'm going to first want to document my test case with Task Capture. And so Task Capture is part of our discovery product suite. It allows RPA developers and testers, SMEs, business users to basically map out their diagram and capture the process. It's a combination of Visio, Word, Image Editor, all in one easy to use tool. And so what I'm gonna do is map out my test case in a given when then sequence, right? So assuming I have all my prerequisites met, I'm gonna then execute my functional workflow and then I'm gonna validate something. And so with the given sequence, let's go ahead and capture opening up and getting my environment ready. And so this is where I'm going to retrieve test data from my test data queue. Uh, for documentation purposes, I'm just going to show getting the test data and, uh, and, and put a screenshot of Excel. The when sequence is going to be my functional workflow. And so if I wanted to execute this manually, I'm gonna just record the same actions I'm doing. So I'm opening up UI Bank to the login page. I'm then getting test data, right? Getting my Excel uh, username and typing that username. 
And then I'm getting the password and typing that password in as well. Lastly, clicking the sign in button. And that finishes my functional workflow. Then I want to record my then sequence, right? The verification, right? What am I actually verifying? I'm just verifying that login failure message that I see on the screen. And so again, providing all this instruction during the recording process is really going to help. Now I have the ability to edit my image if I wanted to blur out any sensitive information or any distracting information. I do have the ability to do that. If I wanted to add annotations or add text, I also have the ability to do that as far as documentation purposes. Any extra screenshots, I have the ability to delete those and get my documentation ready to send over to any more experienced developers than myself. And so the great thing, I can publish it as that Word document. I can publish it as a skeleton XAML file, such that if I wanted to take a stab at it or get my developers a head start, I could do that. And so let's look at the skeleton XAML file. Let's see how can I, as a digital tester, be enabled to take that skeleton and move it to something that can be deployed into my test environment. And so we'll see that I have a framework in place here. Once I open my skeleton file, on the left-hand side, I'm gonna have a series of reusable components that I can drag and drop. And on the right-hand side, I'm actually gonna have an object repository. What our object repository is, is the ability to reuse the selectors or the UI elements that I want to interact with. And this is that framework that's gonna be given to me by a center of excellence, by a centralized unit, and I can use all of these reusable steps to ultimately edit the given when then sequences. And so as you recall, the given sequence, I just put a placeholder here. Instead of getting data from Excel, we're actually gonna get this data from our test data queue. And so for this, we have a series of testing activities and data specific testing activities. And so I can get that test data that I previously had uploaded using attended automation and retrieve it from the proper queue name. So I'll retrieve it from that queue, and then I'll save it as a test data element. So I'm able to create variables, saving it for later. It's as simple as right-clicking and creating a variable, and we're gonna have that test data queue. You'll notice we're gonna be able to go to the variables pane and see um, the variable type, but more importantly, what's the scope of this variable? We want the entire workflow, the entire flow chart to be able to access it. So I'm gonna quickly change that scope. Returning back to our main sequence, we now have our test data. We now wanna execute our functional workflow. And the great thing here is that I know all of the steps that I wanna do, right? The clicking, the typing, any UI automation was automatically provided to me from Task Capture. However, we have the ability to actually enhance this using our modern activities. And what are modern activities? That's going to be uh, the um, object repository. But if available to me, I can use any reusable components or framework that was already given to me by the COE. And so luckily, they, I already have access to a login sequence. And all of the UI elements, the type into, the clicking, that's already going to be available to me. And again, if I needed to change anything or add any additional information, I have access to those UI selectors within object repository. Now that I have my functional workflow, I'm just gonna pass in the test data information. And I'm now ready to add the verification elements. And so again, here, the then sequence, this is just a placeholder. And so instead of this click activity, I'm going to replace it and navigate to my testing activities and verify something. 
And so if I wanted to verify something or make sure I'm on the right page, I'm going to pull that in again from the object repository. I'm going to check something on my main login page. And then I'm going to pull in my testing activity. So we're going to have a series of verification activities. We can verify an expression, an expression with an operator, or my favorite, the verify control attribute. This allows me to drag and drop any other UiPath activity and verify it. And so if I wanted to verify whether a selector exists, right, whether a UI element exists, I can just pull that over. So I'm pulling over my login failure message, and I'm going to use the get text activity to get the text of that. And then as soon as I drag it into my verify control attribute, I'm just going to be able to verify the output text. And I want to make sure that it matches some expected result. And so that's just verifying it against uh, a login failed message. And I can also ensure that screenshots are taken upon success or upon failure. Another new feature that was added is that the ability to put alternate verification titles. And so that's just a property that you can customize. Running the workflow, we'll see it go in action. Because it now has that test data, it's gonna show up as registered but not verified yet. And we'll be able to see the output information inside UiPath Studio. The last step that I'll wanna do is link this information back to what I previously defined in those original steps within Test Manager. And so if we link this file, I'll be able to assign it to an existing case or create a new test case. And same with the requirement. And now that it's linked, I can also open directly Test Manager from UiPath Studio and confirm that I've now added automation to my test case. Now the next steps, we're not gonna see them today, we don't have the time, but we would just deploy this to Orchestrator and be able to execute it on our test robots. Thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of DevCon.